Right here, everybody. Texas Stroker here, Alliance Performance Shop, along with Star Mobiles.com. A little after 9 p.m. here, November 11th, Veterans Day. Uh, thank you to everyone that's serving. Uh, that said, it is cold out here, and I have spent probably about an hour now trying to figure out how to attack this. Attack what you ask? We've got a massive backlog of like KC tool stuff, and that arises for a couple of reasons. Number one, a lot of this stuff, you know, especially here recently, has like been brought in, repeat purchases for work, things that I haven't bought before that I need for work type of thing, tried to get that showcased. There was also like a couple of key items that have been like on a really, really long back order that sort of like held off certain videos. And then there's some really neat brand specific stuff that I was like, yeah, I'm going to save that and make us a, a cool standalone video. And those have just kind of gotten buried, and they were like things that would have been really, really pertinent when they were like brand new. And then we just sort of kind of had them get left behind, and I don't know, I'm thinking maybe, which I guess this is around 100, but I'm thinking like maybe, you know, 100, 100 plus or something, maybe we do like brand specific ones. But uh, as always, if you're new here, we've got timestamps down below. We've got links as well. Those are there for your convenience. Again, as of recording this, all these years, still not a single affiliate link. People tell me I should change that. Maybe we should. I don't know. Again, I'm a simple guy. Any money I have that's surplus, if I have the time, it goes into tools or cars. So <laughs> I'm a, I'm basically be video subjects for you but uh, anyway what I've decided to do here and it's kind of a twofold deal number one it takes me all the way back to some of the early neglected items and number two it takes me back to some stuff that like literally came in this week that uh, will be going back to work and you'll see why here shortly so I think what we're gonna do is get started with this this was an unfortunate thing <laughs> actually um, this and this, all right? These are two scrapers. This is still my favorite. Number one, why? It's comfortable and the color scheme. Plus, I'm loyal. I'm nostalgic. I've, I've done more with this, as you can probably tell. This thing has been on fire. It's been stained. It's been oiled. It's been greased. It's chipped away. Wheel well liner, undercoating. It's done basic stuff, <laughs> casket surfaces. You name it, it's been through the fire again, which I, I think that's pretty pretty easy to tell there but uh, this turns out it was actually made in the USA by Warner um, again just I wish I had more of these things but it is what it is I need to look that up sometime actually but I love that scraper and I still use it this is one that I've started using this goes back geez I don't know how far but uh, this is here for a reason you can think it's a Stavila it's their part number 1241 and it's quite sharp as you can see there she's been through some things not as much as the uh, Warner but I've been really really happy with this thing and I do actually I prefer this handle but I do actually like the wooden handle they did a phenomenal job on it aside from something I've done oh, that was just grease never mind I felt like a, a burr I thought but yeah that's just junk from something I scraped so uh, again little dirty but uh, holds up quite well especially for the stupid low price point on that thing uh, if I go back in time here let's see I think this would have come in in June at some point to be honest with you uh, but for eight dollars and eighty cents this probably costs less than that but this one didn't it's Stavilla's part number are you ready for that one ST seven seven oh seven zero 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 or you could probably just type in one two four eight one or stavilla scraper this one's 60 millimeter and you think oh hey that looks eerily similar well it is and somehow i i'm trying to remember the particulars of how i screwed this up but if you look at this very nice right this little dust i suppose what that would be check out the handle though i noticed this as i was trying to figure out what i was going to do this is the older one again obviously it's been used more this one's been here since june so it's not like a spring chicken but it hasn't been used look at that though this was big stavilla text this has the wrench logo so kind of cool to see that they updated that um, if we ever order more of these we'll kind of keep tabs i assume they would come in this way but yeah i believe at the time that i ordered this it was to go to work and what i was doing at that time was uh lathe four <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever gotten to do like a tool haul update on this thing, but uh, it shredded a belt or two or three or four. And uh, I think 
three or four. I think there were a total of six belts. It might have been seven. There were more on this lathe than like the modern ones, which is kind of crazy. But um, contacting LeBlonde and using the serial number, they were able to trace this thing. It's uh, something, I guess, that uh, we picked up, you know, used, obviously. But it was originally sold to the U.S. Army Air Corps. That's right, not Air Force, but Air Corps. Uh, I guess this is a good for Veterans Day time story, right? And uh, it was sold, if I remember correct, in 1944. So this very well, it's like a World War II era machine. And uh, I think it was ordered a little bit prior. I think it was like a fall order delivered in February type of a thing. So really cool. Um, unfortunately, they don't have manuals. They got sales records, but they didn't have like manuals for that. Uh, what we were trying to do is figure out the belts. <laughs> and uh, had to reverse engineer that. Um, top of my head I can't remember I know the newer ones were all like 99s I think this turned out to be like a 95 that was 5 eighths wide anyway it's it's irrelevant there the reason I bring that up is that cover aside from having like hidden cap screws at the very bottom was a nightmare to get off all the other lays like you know the drive-in faces out like into the shop area this one is mirrored so like your steady rest is over here and then up against the wall you know I've got like a little space for me to go and that's where the gearbox is and of course the pulleys so uh, I got that cover off which that's a that's a chunk of metal right there but there was so much rubber uh, it was ridiculous and I think what happened I either had this and had forgotten to bring it or something uh, but I had a supplier come down and he left some stuff uh, back at the place and so I said, hey, you have a scraper, and he did, and so I got like, I don't know, I think it was like some cheap pro source one, uh, which it did okay. The main thing there, I was trying to take the paint off, which I got like two layers of rubber before you had to worry about that. But uh, yeah, that's what this was bought for. This was to go to work with me to scrape years and years of rubber off of a 1944 LeBlonde. So uh, it didn't make it, uh, sadly, but hey. Uh, it's here now, and it definitely will be headed down to work and be with me in the future. Joining an El Cheapo, I want to say it was it's either Pro Source or Mint Craft or something. It's one of those like import brands that's actually decent, surprisingly. But uh, yeah, I prefer the wood handle and this handle vastly over the plastic handle on that thing. But <laughs> sort of a missed opportunity for greatness there, but it is what it is. So. Uh, yeah, that is why that was purchased. Now, coming in on that same order, and I realized this multiple times, I was like, I know I bought these, and I can't, I'm like, where where are they? And it turns out it was a deal where I just, I'd never brought them. <laughs> and, uh, I went over to my two film drawer over there, and there they were at the very back, buried underneath a couple other items. Uh, it's from Knipex. It is their part number, 28. 81 280 that's right here dun, dun, dun. as you can see here if you're thinking like 280 is that the length it is the length and obviously that's why this thing is like over 10 inches long so we set it down there and you think like hey open it idiot we can't see what's in there that's all we care about well don't forget the price uh this would be 4316 i'm not sure that these weren't tool of in fact i'm pretty confident they were keep bear with me this goes back to june but um essentially they're these okay <laughs> right here uh this would be the transverse tip or 45 degree one which is what's in this box and if you're like whoa you've already got those moron why would you do it again don't don't really need two of those uh, well you're right uh, it could be advantageous but the main thing these make a fantastic pair they're actually sold as a pair by Kinipex. um this was a situation where at work, I've got this. I didn't have this. I waited. I figured, you know, that's like slightly more useful than the 45 degree bent tip one. And lo and behold, it was tool of the day. I'm very confident that's why I bought that. <laughs> and, uh, so we probably paid in the upper 20s to $30 range for it if I had to guess. But currently MSRP 43-ish. Unless you got them on this sweet Knipex cell, then you would have saved even more money. But um, this pair right here and that pair, the last time you probably saw them in action, it was the Ram Revival doing the fuel pump. And man, they were handy for that. Just stupid long reach, crazy stuff, mirrors and lights and smoke shows and everything. And this pair at work, currently, even though it's like not near as old as this pair, looks way worse. Why? I'm actually at work. 
way more than I'm at home and in this shop. So uh, a couple things I've used it on is like weird grease cirques, uh, odd reaches. A lot of times like we have very, very difficult places to go. Like I can't reach my arm literally. Uh, if I had like, you know, if I was seven and a half feet tall, I could probably reach down there. But it's kind of like an arm extension, really, like a go-go gadget type of a thing. And the only downside is, and I say this all the time, I really do prefer Kinepex as two component. I don't consider those comfort, but I consider them two component. I do not like their dipped handles, like channel lock smooth, if you will. Uh, I don't actually mind this. You get really good grip out of them. It's just the this pair of pliers at work is filthy. They're almost silver. <laughs> Okay, I don't remember what it was I did, but something, um, I got anesthes all over them, and these are kind of a pain to clean. Still not, I'd rather have that than I would the dipped handles that wipe off easier, but uh, that's really the only downside to these, is this is currently like the handle configuration. I don't even think you can get them with the smooth uh, dipped uh, handles, to be honest, but that's basically the only bad thing I can say about them. Uh, they're oddball pliers, but again, if you've got them in your arsenal, you'll find plenty of opportunities to use them. So now at work, we'll have the same setup straight and 45 degree. So again, that is what is in the box. I guess we'll double check. <laughs> want to make sure there's not like a, you know, first, first ever Kinepex ratchet prototype that they accidentally shipped in here. And yeah, right here, you can tell it's exactly what we thought it would be. Which again, I, I would have been happier with a level uh, before seeing Kinepex prototype ratchet, but it is what it is. These things are still oiled up. <laughs> That's what they look like brand new. Only thing for OCD people, like you're probably like, oh, well, it looks like you put some torque on those and twisted the handle. That's how they come. And you could argue that they're centrally printed, and some of you might be like, it's not perfectly centered. Again, super minor thing, but it is kind of annoying. Uh, these actually open up really good for being right out of the pack, but yeah, again, fantastic pliers. If you don't have them, uh, they do have the two piece set. My advice to you, check the price. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you actually wind up kind of weird saving money buying them standalone as opposed to the set. I don't think this set comes in a pouch or case or anything either due to their length so you're not really missing anything but it could be cheaper just again check around before you make your purchase and uh, call it good that direction so got the Stavila scraper that missed its moment to shine we had these that I've had for geez you know almost six months now that we just kind of screwed the pooch and forgot to take with us <laughs> and uh, now we're going to move on to like brand, brand new stuff that just literally arrived this week. So there is one more thing, but I think we're going to do like a standalone on that one. Um, let me see if I can actually find this item. We might have to pause momentarily because it is not here, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, let me grab two items. I'll be right back. All right, anyone want to guess where this item was? If you guess the roof of the duster, yeah, that's uh, that's where they were. So, uh, like I said, this literally just came in this week. This is something I intended to add to the work cart a long time ago. It's just every time I had to place an order, they were out of stock. I've been at a point where I need stuff to come in, so I don't want to have to like add something out of stock, wait for it to show up. Uh, this is a repeat offender. I think we've got several sets of these but this point in time for myself, my nephew, and hopefully this is set three. <laughs> but, uh, part number is going to be WT691008. These things are up to 2567 now. I think the first time I bought them, they were like in the 12 to 15 range, and it seems like they're in the 16 to 18, so prices are going up. Um, these are sadly made in China, which is sort of a buzzkill, but uh, right here, I'll just throw them down since you've seen them before. These are from Vit, Vita, and uh, they've got their stupid good-looking black and blue color scheme they updated to. It's a pick set. These are much larger. Again, we've showcased this in the past. The style Villa picks, these are significantly sized up from there. And this is just one of those things you kind of can't go wrong having pick sets. I tend to, I don't necessarily break the picks. 
I deform the picks. <laughs> the meaning, see that nice sharp tip right there? Uh, I'm surprised my hands are this clean now. They, uh, oh boy, I've been covered in uh, swarf for like two weeks now. See all that black? Yeah, that just doesn't come off. It's great. But uh, anyway, this is what they look like. They do a cool job like that point. It looks like a little eyeball staring at you here. They actually highlight what style of the tip it is in the event that you had a ability to store them vertically on like a work surface or something. But yeah, I don't typically like break these. I just, we lose the sharp tip on this one. We ball up and end on the 90 degree. Uh, it's kind of rare that I use that S hook one. <laughs> But uh, they're just, they're really comfortable. I know and love the handles, and I'm going to call it good there. So 25 is kind of getting up there. It's still like a really good price, especially if you're a fan of the handle style. Uh, and again, they are a little bit longer than your, your typical pick. So they're not going to be like huge, like a radiator pick type of a thing. But uh, let me get this guy back in here so we can kind of do a tip comparison for you in case you somehow shame on you i've missed the videos where these were highlighted originally <laughs> but, uh, like i said if you do want to see those comparisons you can go back check that out but you get the 90 you get the hook you get like the slide hook that's the one i don't really use too often and then you've got the straight one so it comes in the pouch which is nice again kind of uh, I suppose they're kind of like files. You don't want the tips banging around if they don't have to. But yeah, $25 now. I think we got those slightly cheaper. But like I said, when they were brand new and we brought them in, they were like around 15 bucks. It was just a stupid good deal. So that's what we have there. Um, I'm trying to decide. I don't know if I have the paperwork for this. I might not. Um, if I don't, we're not going to... I did. I grabbed it. So this item is roughly the same price range. It's $23.80. This is from Ghidorah. It is 232001. That's right here. Anything like, what was that? <laughs> did, you, did you break a ratchet? Like, what, what am I staring at? I don't understand. Well, still don't understand. It looks like a barrel of monkeys, kind of. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that in a while. But then again, I also don't like to go places, I guess, that have barrels and monkeys. <laughs> so, what this little gym is, and they claim that this is made in Germany, uh, it is a pipe reamer. So you got three blades over here, obviously, for your OD, and then you've got three blades over here for the ID. And I don't know, I think I'll take it to work. It would actually be kind of nice here. The problem is here at the house, I mean, I'm, I'm typically not doing anything large. It's going to be brake line uh, when I deal with hard line anymore. It's going to be quarter, three sixteenths, basically to like three eighths most of the time. Um, at work, what I was thinking when I bought this, I got some really junked uh, copper from our supplier, like switch suppliers, or I don't know what those, they've, they're kind of ticking me off. I think I'm going to part ways with them. They keep pulling like subs you know i've had like really good stuff from them for years and then they just go get cheap import crud and they don't tell you ahead of time and they also don't lower the price so uh with this last roll of copper you know i get 50 foot coils of it you know it was not good material and aside from the ends being deformed there was you know both ends then in addition to being deformed were just terrible and there was also like I don't know, it's like somebody stood on it a couple of places where it needed to be kind of like fitted back out and then I wanted to ream it. Uh, I've been running a deburring tool for years just because I have a ton of them and that's what's, what's handy, but I thought, you know, it might be nice to just ream that instead. So that's where this comes in. Uh, that's literally all it is. This is like way stronger of a sidewall than I thought it would be. Uh, I'm kind of holding this up here, inspecting it, and good, good news. Let me Let me try to... Zoom her on in and show you if she'll focus. Right here, you got the Ghidorah logo, you got the number 232001. You're like, yeah, 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 they put that on in China. Oh, this thing's definitely in Chinese. No, you can tell holding the plastic and squeezing it, it's it's better. <laughs> and right there, you got Germany. So that answers that question. Don't even have to bother calling. <laughs> we'll just assume that this is, in fact, made in Germany. So this will be interesting. Um, I just whipped out uh, that whole segment, so I, 
Oh, maybe I can do some smaller stuff with it, but I kind of want to see how I like this. This very well could be coming back and forth from home and work, but if I like it at work, I think I'll just buy another one. It's one of those things, if you've got, like, I don't know, if tool of the day today, uh, for example, is a Ghidorah pin punch set. Um, sorry, drift punch set <laughs> for, like, 44 and you're like, yeah, I want to try this screwdriver, and that gets you up to, like, 50 and you're like, Dad gum. And you go and you estimate freight, and it's like $19, and you're like, geez, that sucks. Put this on there, get your free freight, call it good. Maybe this bumps you up over, you know, your sticker pack if you're after that. But uh, this just, you can tell, you know, when something plastic is junk or good, this is good. This is really good. So uh, I'm excited to see how it actually reams pipe. But yeah, I don't know, it's probably not something you see too often, but it might be one of those things, depending on what you do could be very very useful little item so moving on I guess we will go to the most recent ticket here and uh, this what have I done I have not highlighted this correctly <laughs> one second uh, this is gonna be from Vera it is their part number 021737 and this actually this has a good story with it as well if you're uh, curious what it is it's right here and I remember distinctly German Tool Review. Again, if you haven't seen his channel and you're into German tools, I highly recommend you check him out. Again, when YouTube is weird, uh, when a channel's like not been active in a while, they'll just like bury videos and you can't find them even if you're searching for their terms a lot of the times. But uh, in addition to like tool halls, unboxing type of stuff, yeah, I just did like reviews, comparisons, tests versus competition. That's eventually what I hope to do. I just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but if you're into that sort of thing, which most people are, those channels tend to do quite well. His was German tool specific, so uh, again, a lot of you, if you're new to this stuff, might be unaware that channel exists. But one of the things he used to say is he cannot believe that Vera can even sell these and make a profit. And if you're like, well, why? That's probably like, what, $25 set of hex keys? Nope. You're thinking like, $19.99, idiot? Nope, not that. And you're like, okay, $14.99, you know, I, I could see $14. Seems like a fair price. Little small metric hex key set. They're shorter, stubby-ish versions. Little, you know, unassuming little holster folds out. You know, they're not the sleeved ones, nothing fancy. Ah, yeah, $14.99. No. And you're like, $12.99? No. <laughs> and you're like, okay, fine, they're $30 then. You know, you're screwing around with it. No, no, no. Uh, all too high. And you're thinking like, okay, $9.99? No, the price point, this is MSRP right now, go to KC Tool, $4.48, you know, and this isn't like a stupid tiny thing, you know, like anemically small. Uh, set contents, you got the 152, 2 and a half, 3, 4, 5, on the back side, I think you've got the 6, 8, and 10, and you think like, okay, well this is like their Chinese equivalent, no, 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 this is still made in the Czech Republic, and again, I mean, this is the big deal here, you can get the three full-size keys, Three and four seems to be what I've been using the most here lately. But this thing costs $4.48. I could see $4.48 for this hex key, you know, or maybe the holder, you know, if they get a ton of them made and they're just, you know, nice with the price. But the whole set, sub $5. Insanity, right? Uh, if you were unaware of that, you're welcome. Uh, please go check the link and purchase them for yourself. But the reason I have those. At work, I took my long Veras, you know, on the fancy rainbow sleeve things, and I just kind of used them as my hex keys, and that left a void here. But uh, I've had a really good, I've been having to do some weird stuff. Again, I tell you, you know, like we're SAE at work, well, the forklift isn't. And uh, those set screws, uh, I think they, you know, they're three mils, I believe. And I had a tech out recently, the old school guy that kind of knows what he's doing on machines that aren't like brand new with a tablet that tells you what's wrong and don't require any real skills. So he went in and I told him, yeah, it's three mil and he grabbed his hex keys, you know, literally like in the van. There's like, looks like the Sears bag was cut open and everything just laying out. Fishes around for five minutes, grabs it, comes in, doesn't fit. He goes back out, you know, grabs, you know, size down and size up, they don't fit. And uh, then I was like, well, here, try this, you know, and I hand him, uh, standing there on the flip side to watch for leaks, and I handed him the Vera. And he's like, well, that's not going to fit, and it fit, and he's like, well, I know why yours fit and mine doesn't. <laughs> and uh, that would probably be the Hex Plus profile, but 
Um, anyway, what I'm getting at is those, that is a, this is a stupid idiotic setup that we're dealing with here. Uh, on the leak, essentially where the gland nut is right here at the top of the mast, it's fine and you've got like tri-wing design, right? So you got set screw, set screw, set screw. And then the last guy that did the seal and caused everything to get worse than when the seal was out, clocked it incorrectly. And so you now, it's not just like the gland nuts here with the mast, you've got like thick solid steel here frameworks. I mean, this is like your cradle, right? And it's, you, there's no access to one of the screws. You have to go up for the second one and the first one you can kind of get to. Um, this is to fill that void. Those Veras are long, uh, which is great. You get good leverage out of them. It's comfortable to turn quick with the sleeve. But I thought, you know what? For five bucks, I'm just going to throw these in the cart and they're going to be there. So uh, that's the deal. If you lose one or two of them, you just go buy a whole new set for five dollars and call it good. So, uh, yeah, I had that on my mind from some stuff recently, again, with the lathe as well, and boom, there we go. So, next up, let's jump into lathe land again, all right? So, bear with me. Lathe 3, catastrophic failure. Uh, pinion gear went down. I didn't know the rack had also broke until I got it repaired and could move the carriage far enough away to see that there were two teeth gone there as well. And would you believe... The pinion gear replacement went faster than getting the rack off. And essentially the plan was like to get us back up and running. Uh, I, you know, made the assumption that LeBlanc would have a, it's a two piece deal, which is nice, you know, but I figured it would be four foot and four foot. And what if I told you it was like, I don't know, 38 or 39 inches and then five feet over here. And that's what they did. So anyway, what I had planned to do was like, okay, there's broken teeth here. I don't need to go down here. I'm machining little pieces up here. So I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to put it in the back and then I'm going to take the back one off and put it in the front. You can't do it because it's three versus five. So the drift pins aren't lining up with the slot. So what do you do to get around that? You knock out drift pins, right? Problem was, Again, keep in mind, like, world record for two dudes that have never done a pinion gear in a LeBlanc. Like, I mean, I'm talking like, I've read the horror stories. This went stupid good. <laughs> too good. How too good, you ask? So good that we wound up spending probably three times the amount of time trying to get the pinion rack off. That's right, the pin, you know, the part that you would take little cap screws out and should just fall off? Yeah, that didn't happen. And uh, you think, well, what, what was the deal? I should just like come out, you know, you just bang on it on the end or something, soft face hammer. No, <laughs> uh, I will be honest. The only thing that I can figure out that could have possibly done this, it was like a, an adhesive bond, if you will, not a tack weld, not a spot weld, like just chemically bonded. And the only chemical aside from like oil, you know, that would be there, which you wouldn't think would cause that is the cutting fluid, cutting oil. Um, it's almost like, you know, like pine tar type stuff. And you don't, you typically don't think like, oh yeah, there's cutting oil down here. That's on your part. It gets flung at you, <laughs> you know, flies on the floor, but it doesn't like come down here. And, um, all I can figure is if it like lands on the bed of the lathe and just leeches down. I don't know. You know, so this machine predates my time on earth. So... Who knows what has happened, but like it had never been off, I can tell because the cap screws were meant. And uh, you think, well, that's going to be tied, you know, and yeah, but it should just like come off. And I was so worried about it, I even called the LeBlanc dude. I talked to him a bunch, and I was like, hey man, what's the deal here? <laughs> and he's like, oh, that should just fall off. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and so we were to the point like we were thinking we were going to have to use heat, and I didn't want to use heat because I don't want to like warp the bed of the lathe just trying to get this rack off. And uh, finally, we were just like, screw it, and uh, sharpened the chisel. <laughs> and we came in and hit the backside and got it, and then it was a deal where all the way down, I mean, I had a little tiny little 8-inch pry bar, and we just, the whole way down, you know, I had somebody over here pulling while I was here, just, it was a workout. <laughs> and uh, when I got the 5-foot section done, I got to do the 3-foot section. And then I had to punch out two drift pins, got the long piece up here. It's not really bolted to the back, you know, because you can't, but it got me functional. And um, well, that's 
really kind of ties in better with this item and i'm just going to do it first super excited to have this thing and it was a really good price uh this is from Ghidorah. we'll stick with the Ghidorah theme it's their 1997 and uh this is currently 9512 and uh, right here the long part number let me try to cover some stuff up is going to be that gr6144910 there's 1997 and if you're like swivel head is this a ratchet no that's a breaker bar and so you're like okay this is 381 millimeters right not your typical like standard default 10 inch stuff or 12 inch 381 and i'll tell you right now if you like the looks of this but you're working in tight confines or something they have a 255 millimeter for 8636 this one 9512 for the price difference if you can swing it quite literally in this case i would go with the 381 um this reminds me i meant to have some other things here but this is a this is a beautiful little piece right here so brand new have not used it and uh, the handle fits Gador, you'll note this is not round you know like Stavilla or Pittsburgh Pro or pretty much any other breaker bar you probably see it's got a round shaft cylindrical right this is sort of more like a wrench a really thick wrench right and that's what Gador does even with their ratchets and uh, it's super super nice again I do wish it was just a little bit like if it came up to here I'd be a happy man. I realize you probably want to get as much leverage as you can. Nice grip is provided there, but I'd still kind of prefer my thumb on something comfortable. And you could sort of do this, but I'd probably choke up a little bit more. I'm still very near the end, as you can see there. It's just personal ergonomics. Thing that's crazy here, this is really, really smooth. And what I like about it is there's not like the preset detents. So right here, a little cap screw. You can just kind of adjust the tension, I suppose. Look how thick those beams are. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. So what I'm going to do is come in right here and just throw down the Ghidorah 15 16 You heard it go on. That is immaculate fitment. Uh, I love these Ghidorah sockets. The only real downside to them, they are very very precise that is great for brand new crystal clean assembly type hardware you know <laughs> it is not as enjoyable when something comes in rusty and crusty right because you kind of have to you know crunch your way through wire brush it you know take a wire wheel to it or something to clean off the fastener to get these to fit but you know that is how tight these tolerances are side to side play is virtually non-existent with this thing uh, it's a beefcake, and if you're thinking like, well, okay, well, how does this tie in with the lathe? Well, let me tell you, those, <laughs> I assume this is likely to do with the cutting fluid as well, but uh, those cap screws that hold that rail together, oh my, those were tight. And uh, currently, I've wanted to buy like a really high quality half inch drive. I need quarter and three eighths particularly. They're never in stock, and so that again would delay an order. Uh, what I did, um, that one, it wasn't as bad, but then we spiral into the chuck. I didn't know that the chuck was also screwed up from this because the person didn't tell me. And I'm sitting there, you know, and got the rack back on and everything's great, right? I'm like, sweet, you know, I'm going back and forth and I just drove the, you know, uh, drill all the way up there and tightened it down. So I idiot proof it so you can't run the carriage off the back of the rack until I got the new piece in. Uh, which I do have now, I just haven't gotten time to install it. But, you know, come in, everything's great. And uh, we get it back up and running, they're machining, and uh, I think it was later that day I got notified, like, hey, you know, the chuck won't move. I'm like, what do you mean the chuck won't move? You know, you just, just ran apart. <laughs> and uh, I'm assuming, I think I know exactly what happened. I've, like, scientifically deduced exactly how this occurred, and I'm pretty confident in my accuracy here, but... Long story short, the chuck is seized mechanically. Uh, the three jaw, we cannot go in, we cannot go out. It's just here, right? Totally like welded shut type of thing, if you will. So, um, it's an interesting thing. It's from Cushman, but it was made in Japan. I think it dates back when I talked to the guy. It was also like 81, 80, 81, somewhere in there. And uh, 
that thing was mint, like stupid mint. Um, <laughs> the the cap screws hadn't come out. When I took the chuck off, and I'm going in there, and you know, like I'm thinking there's something wrong on the scroll side, right? Um, those cap screws, wow. <laughs> I, uh, once again, like, I had a little hazette as the you know 3H drive 8816 HPS because I have the quick release there at work, as you know from the videos. And uh, I used a Pittsburgh. That's right. All of my I've got really good brands at work, but they're all old and they're all well used. Armstrong, Allen, Pro, you name it, they're all there. But like, you start looking at the edges of a hex profile, and they're just all rounded over. <laughs> And so the best condition I could find in 3 8 was my Pittsburgh stuff. And I, honest to gosh, just had that set for the quarter for when I, like, drive in, you know, like, transit hole plugs and motors. <laughs> and so I go and I take a Pittsburgh uh, hex bit socket because it's got sharp round corners and they haven't folded over. And I put it on that little Hazette 8816, and I don't know how, but I broke those free. Uh, the back side is quarter inch. It was there were ten of them. It was stupid, stupid low space between like the body of the lathe, the slush box over here, and then the chuck. Uh, somehow I did that too, and I did a lot of that just with the Vera hex key. And um, which again, it's weird because they're it was made in Japan, but it was quarter and three eighths, crazy. But that's where this comes in. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I want as much as I can swing. I think on the front side. I can do this. I probably would have been safer with a 10 inch iteration, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this sucker. If it's too big, you know, I'll at least have a feel. I've never had a Ghidorah breaker bar. So I like, you know what? This is my testing point. The other thing I liked about this over say Stavilla or Hazette, Hazette hasn't updated their breaker bars. Like if you recall that little, uh, let me actually open up the toolbox and bring some stuff out for you. All right. So my apologies. I should have had this stuff before the video, but one of the huge, this is going to sound stupid to some of you, others of you will be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> One of the big selling points, aside from getting to try the Ghidorah Breaker Bar, was the hanging hole. And if you're thinking like, what? That's that's really stupid. Well, here, let me show you what we've got going on. With Stavilla, this is my only Stavilla Breaker Bar. I keep meaning to expand it, waiting for tool of the day type of thing. Uh, this is a 3 8 one. It's fantastic. Again, doesn't have the detents, but it's sort of more positive the weird thing on it was it used a big phillips screw <laughs> but uh, really do like it um it didn't have a hanging hole and again the Ghidorah was a little bit better priced and in stock oddly enough but Hazette, their breaker bars have this style of handle okay like their previous generation if you will uh this is on a little flex head if Hazette updated their breaker bars to the hp line of handles that might have been in consideration. I've never used a Zet breaker bar either. Literally just have style villas in terms of German tools. So the Ghidorah had that going for it. And I bring that up because if I decide to leave this with the lathes, right, I can run over to the pegboard at two and just like hang this thing up and have it there. Uh, same thing. Like if I take it back to the cart, it can lay flat like these all could. But this was in stock. It was available. It was a great price. And again, it's a beefcake absolute beefcake uh and so my thoughts were hey you know if i ever need to like this is just 15 16 uh, she's seen some use again equal equal wear on those socket walls but um at work typically you know like 15 16 inch and an eighth is going to be like the big stuff i do so this opens the door for that it feels really nice in hand again Total nitpicking, but I would prefer just ever so slightly. You hear me say this all the time. Again, Harbor Freight, Tecton Capri, you know, cheap stuff, expensive stuff. I'm always, almost every time, I'm like, well, I wish the handle was just a little bit <laughs> longer or wider. This one's actually really close. Again, if you choke back, uh, you've got a nice landing spot for the thumb. Maybe I'll do that. But uh, on the lathe, it's sort of weird because, you know, you're not necessarily perpendicular to your work. You're sort of up and over type of thing. So, yeah. Um, also, it's a little bit... If I did leave it hanging, which I don't know that I want to do, if this was at a machine, okay, really comfortable, almost a tri a but more of an oval, the problem is a cheater bar, cheater pipe, fits over that real easy, okay? 
this old style has that handle. It's almost cylindrical, right? You know, your cheater pipes fit over it. The HPS line, which, your HP line, I should say, that has the, uh, sorry, this one's so dirty, but uh, <laughs> even it is like kind of a cylindrical taper. So your cheater pipe, if it fits here, it's going to slide over. Look at this. Due to the way Ghidorah makes these, and kind of being more like a wrench than cylindrical shape like those three items, look how wide that is, okay? There's a chance that the cheater might jam over it, but this is sort of like, this is the smooth, the blue, and then this black is textured. If I did leave this out, for my convenience, but where someone else might grab it and use it, because this is mine, like, I don't, no, 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 this is me, but, you know, I'm just thinking of where I would use this. <laughs> if someone dared to use my stuff, I don't think they could get a cheater over it. And uh, that was also something that did cross my mind, I'm not going to lie, so... Uh, yeah, I think this was a really good pickup. I'm excited to use it. Obviously, I need seat time with it to see how well I like it or don't like it, etc. But, uh, yeah, first ever Ghidorah breaker bar for me. This was something I meant to ask Colin. I noticed because I was like, you know, I might like that. I wonder what else they've got. Their 3 8 is a black handle, and I don't know if that's like an old stock photo. I don't know if, like, they just, you know, well, nobody uses 3 8 breaker bars and they don't care to update it or something. Or if it's just like an economy line, I don't know. <laughs> but I was curious because if I like this thing, uh, it might become my go-to breaker bar. Again, this is a bad example because it's 3 8 from Stavilla. But, you know, typically you're going to have cylindrical stuff, you know, everywhere. And this is just a total different take on it. And quite frankly, I'm not sure it wouldn't dissipate the loads better. But, hey... Bottom line, I have that for all those nefarious purposes there, and I just need to get, I don't know, I might, I've had that on my wish list forever. You talk about Tool of the Day. You know what I've always wanted to see on Tool of the Day? The little Ghidorah <laughs> Expit set in the metal case, uh, you know, at, at like an affordable price. Is what it is, I suppose. But uh, anyway, speaking of Ghidorah in a metal case, what a great segue I've created, because... I have this, and this ties in again with the chuck. If you're like, hey, yeah, that chuck, you know, you got it off, you got it apart, obviously, using uh, a little Hazet 3H drive and a Pittsburgh of all things, but what's the deal? What what did you find inside? You know, did you break off a bevel gear or the pinion is trashed? No, those looked really good. Uh, swarf in them for, I don't know that that thing was ever opened up. It was like minimal. I mean, this is stupid stupid good um and so you're thinking like okay well the back side what was going on there with the scroll i can't tell you i have no idea i cannot get in there <laughs> and uh i am bummed it is wrecking my mind uh, i've actually i t called into cushman and uh, i was surprised i didn't know they were still in business they are uh super nice people i had to go through like some phone hoops but then there's actually real cushman people uh, the tech guy that called me back the next day, super nice. Seemed like he had, I don't know, two or three other dudes in the office with him or shop or wherever they were. Uh, all of them had suggestions and input and everything. And currently, uh, I was supposed to soak it over the weekend in liquid wrench. I don't have liquid wrench. And it's frowned upon when I spray ballastal. <laughs> it doesn't smell bad to me anymore, but uh, apparently I am the anomaly there. So everyone else hates it. Um, WD-40 did nothing. I, like, I cleaned it up, you know, pretty good. Like, that pinion gear, oh yeah, she looks great. Problem is, you know, the back side of that pinion gear is a scroll, and I am afraid that one of two things happened. Either the scroll bent, or the jaw deformed, you know, when it took the hit. And I'm kind of thinking <laughs> that, uh, it might be a combination of the two, and I'm afraid that's gonna, like, trash that. But I need to get in there. I've thought, you know, hey, it must be a chip pack. And so I soaked it and I blew it out with air and I came out looking like a Tin Man because it's like a turbo fan type of a design. Yeah. So if you're thinking like, well, what's this about? You know, get, get back to the tool hall here. We need to know. We need to know more. Maybe we can help you. Well, this is from Ghidorah. It's their long part number of 301-4320. You can think of it as 316D. This is a six-piece pin punch set in a metal case. Now you're thinking like, hey, wait a minute, buddy. No, 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 you don't do that. Don't, no, 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 do not do it. You gotta go get yourself some brass punches. That's what you need. 
I agree with you, and that is exactly what I did. That was my first order of business. And uh, they're good brass punches. They're from Mayhew. Uh, they were good brass punches. I have broken one. The other one... So let me get back to the chuck, shall we? All right, if this is the three-jaw chuck right here, and you remember, I cannot remove the jaws. The face of the jaw, yeah, but like the body, no. And the T-slot, that is mechanically bonded, okay? So ordinarily, like if these were opened up and they would have like frozen when we were grabbing like a big OD or something, I could get right to that scroll plate and hammer her out with a brass punch dead on straight up. I'm a genius. Look at me. Wow, the scroll plate. I can fix that. Look at us back in business. I can't do that. The jaws are in a terrible position. They basically little 12 inch chuck. <laughs> so the body of the jaws are here and they come out and I kid you not, like there's my fingernail. Uh, right there. That is the space that I've got. Essentially something like, geez, this, okay. Uh, end of this tech screw is about all you can get there. So the problem with that is I can't stand up and hit straight down because the jaws are here. Uh, the housing, it's like picture a U-shape, 90 degree corners, right? And then the housing of the actual chuck is here. And so the scroll plate sits in and you literally, like, you can touch the scroll with your fingernail. And then you have the jaw and you're like, well, hit it from the inside. Uh, the jaws are part way in. <laughs> you, you have this lip. Uh, I think on number one, I have slightly more than I do on two and three. But it's like a fingernail and like a fraction of a fingernail on one. So... That's what you're left with. I think it was the 8th inch brass. Keep in mind, this is Mayhew, so it should be good stuff. Uh, it's gone. And if you're like, you know, like, well, hey, you know, if you're sitting there with all this stuff, you'd have, like, pin punches from Starrett or something, you know, or Mitatoyo. They're steel. Didn't want to use them. So what I did, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, I've got this at home. A different configuration, if you will. But this right here, I ordered it. Uh, again, keep in mind this ties in with a, a tool of the day purchase as well, but this was a super nice set and I was like, you know what, I can use that all the time on other things, it's going to be fine. So this I love, it's a black metal case and it's going to be the stupid nice enamel blue Ghidor and even Hazette on some of the hammers which I've been looking at recently. They have that like beautiful baked enamel finish. It's stupid, stupid nice. Uh, the set contents on this, we're going to have the big punch is a 10. Okay, so right here. Next one is an 8. If you guessed 6, you'd be correct. If you guessed 4, you'd be wrong. It's a 5. <laughs> and right here is a 4. And this smallest one is a 3. Okay, 6 piece set 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, and 3. And the reason we're closing that up and not showcasing the big one like we typically do is this is the one I was using. I cringe doing it, I hate doing it, and it did nothing aside from kind of mar up the finish of the scroll. Why? It's got to be seized like crazy. So what I want to highlight here is how this thing held up because this has been, well, I didn't hit it super hard because again, I'm, I'm dealing with something kind of delicate, but you can see the Ghidorah branding there, you can see the three. You can see made in Germany right there. Uh, the tip itself, again, and it's this barely, this really doesn't fit well, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. I kind of need something smaller that would also probably bend. The tip is held up really good because again, it's, I can't come in straight. I have to like hold this at an angle. That's why we were marring up, uh, marring up the finish uh, on the, uh, brass and then again the brass just basically one hit and you bend two hits and you bend really bad three hits and it's <laughs> rendered useless until what do i do to straighten it back out the pliers wrench yet another use for the pliers wrench but coming in here we will actually grab the big one so i can showcase this obviously this would be a dream machine to knock that sucker out if it was brass but i show you that for this you see how beautiful that top side is where People like you and me will soon be hitting it. Here's this one. And the beautiful blue is gone. <laughs> so sad. Uh, but again, it should last a long time on the body. But I, I do want to say like that was not a whole lot of action there. Uh, this was hit with the Proto Anti-Vibe the majority of the time. And I kind of came in with a, a dead blue a few times. I think I started with a dead blow, and I was like, well, let me, let me see if I can't break her free, and I could not, and it's really, really sad, but yeah, 
So beautiful, beautiful pin punches. Mine over there, the drift punches and everything, are kind of like the, uh, sort of like a gold color, you know? But, yeah, I do really like this set. It was, uh, I don't know if I covered the price, but right now, if you want to get it for MSRP 4420 this is one of those things. I typically like to buy this for less money, right? Um, but it was kind of important to me, and I pulled the trigger. Ironically, today, here on Saturday the 11th, tool of the day is another Ghidorah metal case set. This is the drift punches, though. So these are the pin punches. Note how they're cylindrical, kind of like a hinge pin. And the drift punches are going to kind of be tapered, sort of more like a center punch type of design. But yeah, I love, absolutely love the blue, as you should know. And then right here, you do have a hanging slot, if you care. This will probably just go in my cart at work. But yeah, really nice. I've not ever had a metal case from Ghidorah, so it's kind of cool to finally have one. Sad circumstances to get it, but cool to have it. So, I think that is it. I think that is what I want to showcase here and take back to work with me. So again, this guy will be going back. I'll finally take this guy who missed out on his calling card. The transverse ones will be joining this straight set. Uh, pin punches and the pipe reamer, so... Yeah, kind of just, again, sort of a mix from five months ago and this week, and that's that's what I have to offer you, so <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed. Um, I actually thought I was going to go out today and get a liquid wrench and go back down to work and start soaking it, but I, I didn't. I've got a supplier. He was supposed to bring me, you know, I just told him, I asked for the price, and I didn't get it. I said, I'll just take four to six cans. Seemed he would have come Friday. That didn't happen. So I'll have to get on that and see how it goes. Again, it's like I need to post a picture of it and see if anyone has any ideas. But it's kind of like the worst it could possibly be with where the jaws are. If the jaws could be removed, I think the scroll would probably just fall out. If the jaws were, like, wide, I think I could get real good access to the scroll, come in, punch, you know, 90 degrees to it and get it knocked out inspect it but where they are now it's like inaccessibility on display so we also had these which will finally again it took me a long time to land a set of these for work so i'm kind of happy about that but man i'm losing feeling in my left leg it's really cold out here battery light's not flashing but we are down two bars i might try to film another one before i hit in call it a night get my fantasy team set workout stuff like that <laughs> you know regain feeling in my left leg type of a deal but uh, yeah, it's kind of just a hodgepodge mix of things here, but all this has something in common, and it's that it's going to work. So uh, with that said, again, if you've got any ideas or you've ever had something like that happen <laughs> with an old LeBlanc, let me know. But uh, yeah, the good news is I'll get to use this. I guess I don't have to because I'll be tightening things, but I'll probably use it anyway uh, for reassembly and for the pinion rack. And yeah, if you have experience with any of the German brands, I really like the Ghidors, but the Stavilla ones uh, are appealing as well. Similarly, Hazet has the titanium nitride coating, which I'm a big fan of, so I don't know. Uh, if one of those ever goes, which the problem is it's SAE that I need, not metric, but if one of those ever goes on tool of the day, I'm pulling the trigger, and I might be forced to get them earlier, but for what it's worth... Has that 8816 HPS? That is the quick release one that would be slightly not as strong as a standard HP 8816. That and a Pittsburgh of all things. Again, I tell you, those old T handles, I swear by them. <laughs> I assume this is like similar metal, same factory type of a thing, but it was the best I had in terms of like, I didn't want to like take brand new, never before touched cap screws and ruin them with like an old Armstrong bit or something. So. I went with the three eighths that I had, and hey, it got the job done. So I'm gonna gonna call that a win, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So anyway, uh, if you have any opinions on like really good, uh, and I might coking is an option as well. We'll just kind of see. Proto, uh, those have never been. I would have gone there, route, but they're never in stock. I actually had planned to buy some like way like March. <laughs> been looking, waiting for a good deal. And, uh, yeah, still kind of without in terms of the half-inch drive sizes, which you sometimes need for crazily over-torqued things or seized fasteners. But, yeah, we will uh, take it from there. So, 
LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a little something. If you got any opinions or expertise or thoughts or experience with any of these tools, by all means, feel free to leave it down below. If you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. If you subscribe, ring the bell, jump your charger across the creek while wielding your Ghidorah 381 millimeter half inch drive breaker bar, scraping it simultaneously with a Stahl Villa scraper. And your passenger riding shotgun has the Knipex transverse profile pliers holding a Gudor pipe reamer as you polish out a brake line that you can install midair before you land and have to stop quickly before a ravine. YouTube just might notify that we got new videos every Wednesday and Saturday night in Texas time. With that said, thanks again for watching. I hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop.